So in verse 83, the topic of discussion is uh, again to the uh, people of Israel uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the covenants he took from them. This is the, uh, what is a commandment which are false for a Muslim also. We need to be aware of it. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِّنكُمْ وَأَنتُم مُّعْرِضُونَ Remember when we took a pledge from the children of Israel, Israel, you shall not worship anyone other than Allah, and you shall do good to the parents, and to near of kin, and to orphans and the needy, and say to the people what is good, and be steadfast in Salah, prayer, and pay Zakah. Then, you went back, on your word, all but a few among you, and you are used to turning away. What is this verse number 83 have to be understood really. This is the commandments which were taken by the children of Israel, which means Jews and Christian, and it is also for, also for us. One's first covenant was that, uh, You will worship none except Allah. So when making partners with Allah, this I will elaborate in a moment. What is a uh, type of shirk? It means making partners with Allah in act of worship. There are three types. Shirk with that. In the personality of person being of Allah, shirk fil ibadat in the worshiping of Allah, or the shirk means making partners in the worship and making shirk fil sifat, sh uh, uh, partnership in the attributes of God. It is to be understood in the zat means there is nobody equal to Allah, there is nobody above Allah, nobody can enforce Allah, nobody can influence Allah. Allah is being unique and being himself alone that is the shirk that making a partner with allah so shirk for that is making somebody part of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's shirk. like jesus is the son of god or ezra was the son of god or buddha is a god this is a shirk with the personal being of that of allah second part the shirk fil ibadat in other words act of worship when we do the worship like praying so if we start praying as we pray, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, when we do the Salah, if we do Salah, we think, I make intention to make two rakah Salah for Muhammad Rasulullah, there's no such thing. Salah is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we fast, we fast for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we pay charity, we pay charity for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we do Hajj, we do Hajj for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When we say Shahada, first thing, La ilaha illallah, none is worthy of worship except Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He is not a part of Allah. He's a creation of Allah, he's a devotee of Allah, he's a prophet of Allah, he's a slave of Allah, he's a creation of Allah. So this is the shirk for that. Then shirk for ibadah, that we do not make partners in the act of worship, in devotion, which is salah, as I mentioned. Then shirk for sifa, the partnership in the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The example is that we can say certain things which in the language, in the words, that attribute of God, equal to the attribute of human. And this is something to be understood. The difference is, if a, if a God has an attribute, God's attribute is personal. Nobody gave him. Nobody made him God. God is being God from himself. Allah is Allah from eternity, and we do not know when. Allah is there all along. That is making him Allah. It means who existed omnipotent, omnipresence, omniscience. He was there all along. And then... If somebody else has that attribute, for example, uh, that attribute is given by Allah, not by his or her own self, because God is the only one who has the self-attribute. Every like, for example, in Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh, "Inna Allah bin Nasi la rauf rahim." Allah indeed is for the mankind is forg uh, forgiving and merciful. Now. This is the attribute of Allah, but it is a personal attribute of Allah being Rahim, be merciful. 
right? Ra'uf is a personal attribute of Allah. But then Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is mentioned in the Quran, Qad ja'akum rasulun min anfusikum. Indeed have come a messenger of your own kind. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum. For him it is very dear for you that he should not be uh, you should not be in any hardship. Harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'uf rahim. And he is greedy and envious that you should have good for you as a ra'uf, as rahim. Earlier we heard Allah is ra'uf rahim and Muhammad sallallahu is ra'uf rahim. Muhammad is ra'uf rahim by the will and leave and is amr and the awn Allah. Otherwise he would not be ra'uf rahim. So Prophet has been given this attribute in the Quran as the attribute of God, but it is by gave, by the leave of Allah, by the will of Allah. Second example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu alim al wa shahada. Allah is the aware and knowledgeable about the unseen and the testimony and the witness, right? Then it is also said for Prophet Muhammad, Allah says, Wa ma huwa al Allah, Prophet Muhammad does not hide the unseen or the knowledge of secrets of unknown. So he, how would he not tell? Because it's the attribute of God. So Prophet was given the ghaib by Allah. Allah has the knowledge of ghaib by himself. So if we say that our Prophet has the knowledge because what is the Prophet? Is a Nabi. Nabi means comes from the Naba. Nabi, Nabi is the one who is the bringer of the news. Naba is the news. What news? Average everything known is for us. But the Naba is the one which comes from the unseen. The Naba of the ghaib which is the unseen. That's why they are prophet. Otherwise, all of us have some knowledge, certain knowledge we may have more than the others. So Allah is a ghaib, prophet knows that. Our angels are ghaib, Allah knows, prophet knows that. Quran revelation was a ghaib, this prophet knows that. Jannah, the hereafter, the day of resurrection, the hell, and the predestiny, all this thing and resurrection after death, all are unseen and this is a knowledge Prophet gave to us. So that's why we believe in Prophet. But we believe that Prophets are Prophet because Allah made them Prophet. They are not by their own. If you believe that they are on their own as Allah has, that's a shirk. So this is something very clearly to be understood that people should not mix up this commonly thing, thing is that if you ask for some help from now on Allah, it means you're doing shirk. That's total utter nonsense. So this thing should be clear. Then the second command for us, which is given to the other people is, وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And treat your parents with the utmost beautiful way. Second command. The third one, وَذِلْ قُرْبَ And then to the relative, the near and the distance. وَالْيَتَامَ And the orphan. وَالْمِسْكِينَ The poor and destitute. So we have to be in showing them utmost beautiful etiquettes and manners to dealing with these relation. Who are? Parents, relatives, orphan poor and destitute. And قُولُ لِلنَّاسِ husna And speak to the mankind with the kindness. That is the sixth attribute we have to have. We have to have a perfect wording. We should be not losing our dignity and respect for other, even though we disagree and disrespect. وَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ husna And not just talk beautiful. The way, the most utmost beautiful way that person will be feeling attracted to your conversation. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ And establish the prayer. That is the seventh commandment. And pay the charity and alms, which is 2.5% for the Muslim for the, after a year of saving above 7.5 7 ounces of gold or 52 ounces of silver possession for a year. And then you turn away from that. So believe in these nine attributes which was given to them. We have even more. We have actually more than that. We'll come to that discussion. We'll talk about it. So these people turn away from their covenant and contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's listen to uh, what they used to do. Uh, I will come to this discussion, verse number 84 and onwards. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ ثُمَّ أَقَرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ When we took a pledge from you, you shall not shed the blood of one another, and you shall not drive one another out of your homes. Then you agreed, being yourselves the witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yet, here you are, killing one another, and driving a group of your own people out of their homes, supporting each other against them in sin and aggression, and if they come to you as prisoners, you would ransom them, while their very expulsion was unlawful for you. Do you, then, believe in some parts of the book, and disbelieve in others? So, what can be the punishment of those among you who do that, except disgrace in present life? And, on the day of judgment, they shall be turned to the most severe punishment, and Allah, is not unaware of what you do. So verse number 84, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, there's some error in, in recording, let me correct it. Allah says, we took a covenant from you. That you will not shed the blood of each other. And you will not expel, exile anybody from your own people. He means a believer of the Torah and gospel as a Muslim. And then you make the aqrar, you agreed upon this. And you are witness to that. And then how could you kill each other of yours? And you expel our individuals from your own, from their own and place of residence. And you have turned your back over it. And you did something which is adawa, uh, udwan, uh, enmity and expulsion. And when they come to you as a prisoner, then you pay for their ransom. Which was already forbidden for you to expel them and make them prisoner or to bring them back to the, as a prisoner from the other side. I'll explain to you in a moment what it means. So you believe in some portion of the book and you deny some of it. What should be the jaza, the return and reward for that person who does this kind of evil thing? Except that it should be disgrace in the worldly life. And the day of judgment, that should be turned towards the painful punishment. Allah is not unaware of what you do. And these are the people who have done the trade of the worldly life for the hereafter. The punishment of them will not be relieved or decreased or diminished or lightened up. And there will be nobody helping them. So what is this context of 84 through 86 verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about? It was actually in Medina, there were two tribes of Arabs who were known as Aus and Khizraj. And there were other seven castle and tribes of Jewish people. And they had made allegiance with some with the Aus, some with the Khizraj. And whenever there used to be fight between Aus and Khizraj, they had been fighting for hundred some years, 120 years according to some scholars. And what was used to be happening is... Uh, uh, they would uh, uh, they would uh, fight with their alliance. It means the Aus uh, tribe of Jewish for allegiance will fight with the uh, the Khizrij tribe of the Jewish people who have their allegiance with them. And what happened was they would kill each other in the battlefield. But when those some of them will get prisoner by others, so what they would do is they will themselves pay for the ransom to relieve that person out. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is taking, telling that that you are in the first place were not allowed to expel them, not to fight with each other, not to kill each other, and then you will not make take prisoner of your own people on behalf of the disbelieving, like the people of the Aus and Khizraj were pagan idol worshipper. You are the monotheistic believer of the of the Islam. 
So you should not have done that, yet you did it because for you, a covenant or contract or allegiance was more important than the faith. So what they did is they traded. And now we know that what some Muslims are doing today, this is exactly what they do. They were not supposed to have this thing done to the Muslims when they are being caught as a prisoner, as uh, Pakistani, uh, they, they give that the woman, uh, Asia, uh, whatever, um, uh, to, to the U.S. government, and she was not supposed to be turned in. She was a Muslim woman. So as the other Muslim prisoners. So they become part of the war, which was not part of their war. Pakistan was not supposed to be, or Muslims of the other things which are not supposed to be, and then they turn on each other, and then they kill each other, and then they take the prisoner of each other, and then they relieve those prisoners of each other. This is not Islamic. This is what happened. The people of the Jewish tradition did it before, and that Quran forbids such act. Uh, we, we, there's a lot more into it. I hope I don't need to explain the whole word. It's explained. You cannot kill a Muslim. You cannot uh, put a Muslim into hands of a non-believer just because it is some sort of a financial arrangement. And you have to be careful with that. It's a very, very technical issue. If you declare you're not Muslim, that's fine. That's, that's between you and Allah. But when you say you're Muslim, then you have to protect your own people. This is the Quranic command. So as being commanded for the Christian and the Jews that they should protect their own. And we see that the Christian and Jews protect their own. For one Jewish prisoner, they trade in hundreds of Palestinians. For the one American prisoner, they traded for uh, all the Afghanistan Taliban, which we see. So the other people are doing it according to their covenant. And they're not, never, never betray their people either. They're not being traitors. And, and among Muslims, we are finding a lot of traitors. So those who turn against their own nations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Uh, next discussion is uh, about uh, Musa al-Islam and Isa al-Islam. Now, the, because they denied Jesus, peace be upon him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about this conversation. And it is very interesting to listen. 87 onwards. There's a lot of, lot of details about each and every verse. So uh, we have to be a little lengthier to describe this whole details. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَقَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَى Indeed, we gave Musa the book, and after him we sent messengers, one following the other, and we gave clear signs to Isa, the son of Miriam, Jesus, the son of Mary, and supported him with the Holy Spirit. Then, how is it that every time a prophet came to you with what does not meet your desires, you grew arrogant? So, you gave the lie to a group of the messengers and killed others. <laughs> and they said, Our hearts are veiled. Rather, Allah has cast damnation upon them for their disbelief. So, they believe just in very little things. And so verse 88 has a story behind it, and so as the uh, verse 80, 87 and 88. So, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ Allah says, indeed we send uh, Moses with the scripture, which is Torah. وَقَفَّيْنَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ And we strengthen his message with the repeatedly back-to-back -back prophets and messenger. Uh, what, according to some uh, description that even, even every city or some time, uh, there was a time when there was each city has a prophet of its own and the messengers with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Musa alayhi salam uh, and Allah says وَعَتَيْنَا عِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمِ الْبَيَّنَاتِ and then we give Jesus the son of Mary the clear signs وَعَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدْسِ and helped him with the Ruhul Quds with Jibreel alayhi salam now there will be few discussion coming about Jibreel alayhi salam how they believe and what they thought of him because when Prophet Muhammad told was questioned who bring you the scripture revelation they said well Prophet says that it was Jibreel alayhi salam so they would said oh we are enemy with him. He was our enemy. He was the one who brought all the curse upon us, which is Islamically believed is that he would not do anything except Allah's command to them. So then, Allah says that, uh, 
of a kulla madaakum. So Jesus had a uh, rule uh, Qudus, which is Jibreel Islam with him all the time, whenever it was, uh, he was there with him as to help him. And every time when uh, came to them a messenger, the Jewish people or the tradition of the uh, Bani Israel, when they, uh, or children of Israel, when the messenger came to them, whatever they did not desire, what like for them, astagbartum. So they, they did the kibar, arrogance, they showed the arrogance. A group of them, they denied, and a group of them were killed. The messenger, according to some narration, hundred and uh, some forty or forty-three prophets were killed in one time uh, because they were tired of listening to this preaching and all that. And then those who stood up in support was about hundred and twenty or some uh, other people, righteous, uh, righteous, uh, righteous, pious men, scholars were killed by them because they thought these people are just making life miserable for them, or they did not believe in uh, that they'd want to take any more authority and messages. And then they said, our hearts are well. Allah says, no, there's been a lana, the curse being upon damnation has been cast upon them because of their denial. A little what they just believe in it, or some of them believe it, on the little things they believe. So this tells us that declaring themselves to be a Jewish or, or Christian or Muslim is not unless you believe in Allah and his messenger and convey the message accordingly. So we will begin with the verse number 89.